Let's talk about edge bevelers. This is a really important step, really important tool to give you a nice finished edge. This will come into play when we get into burnishing uh, the veg tan leather. This will give you a nice rounded edge instead of a 90 degree edge on a piece of leather where that doesn't look real good. If it's beveled and it's burnished, it's gonna look a lot nicer. So these come in different sizes. So how wide is that gap? How much of a, a rounding of the edge are we gonna have? Obviously the thicker the leather, the more of a bevel you can, you can have. So something thin like this is going to take a much thinner edge beveler than something thick like this. So having a couple of different types is a good idea. There's also different shapes. So I prefer this one. It's flat, it's easy for me to control. I have this one, I don't use it a whole lot. This little swoop here is just not comfortable for me. You might prefer it. It's important that we keep these sharp. So we'll talk about that first. I'm gonna slide this over and we'll talk about sharpening these. If you use a thick piece of leather like this, not a big deal, you can do it flat on the table. I prefer to use something to elevate my tool a little bit. There's other ways to do it. This is the easiest, cheapest way. The reason I'm using it up on this granite block is so that the foot doesn't rest on the table. I want it to overhang. Now I'm gonna show you I do the same thing when I'm beveling a thin edge. So I'm gonna take some Jewelers Rouge. These are pretty sharp, so I don't need to do a lot. Uh, I polish these quite a bit. So I'm just gonna use the flesh side and I'm gonna use the same angle that I push with and I'm just gonna pull. It's about 10 times. An indication that you'll need to sharpen this is you'll hear it almost tearing when you're going through the leather. That's a, a good time to stop what you're doing sharpen it up and you'll be good to go. It was that simple. We're done with that. To use this tool, a couple of things need to happen. You need to be very consistent in the angle you're pushing at. So we don't want to lift the tool and lower the tool or rock it side to side. It'll show inconsistencies in that bevel. I'm showing you this angle right here because you can see that the foot is sitting on the table even when I'm against the edge of this leather because this is thin, oh, I don't know, maybe four, four and a half ounce leather. If we were to use something a little bit thicker, cool, no problem, we can do this all day. Uh, I couldn't even turn it all the way 90 and have it touch the table. So I'm gonna move up here to the granite. This is what I use this for a lot. If you line it up right on the edge, you now have a place for that foot to hang into open space so you can get a consistent depth. Now it's important to do this as, as much as you can in one continuous motion. People tend to keep their hand really high. So drop your wrist and then you just push. And this is one of the most satisfying processes for me. When you do the flesh side, just be aware that you're gonna to have to push a little bit harder, otherwise it'll fragment. Now for the purpose of this video, I sanded this edge. I didn't need to, but I sanded it. And you can kind of tell there. And what happens is you're gonna get a little bit of a mushrooming effect on the edge. Much more apparent on a thicker piece. So I'll drop that down here you can see it sort of mushrooms out. We're gonna to have to think about that. If we leave this edge up from the sanding, I don't know if it'll do it, but we'll try. It may leave behind a little bit of extra material. So it didn't there, but it definitely will here. You can see how raised that is. So to avoid this, what'll happen is you'll just have a little bit of the flesh, or I'm sorry, the 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 surface will stay behind and then you'll have to go back over it. So I recommend flattening it out a little bit. Now you can take that whole edge off. Just like that.
doing a turn, there's a little bit more to it. I don't like to move the tool, like I said in the Stitch Groover video, this same principle applies here. So if you hold and turn your material, you'll have a much more consistent rounding of the edge versus trying to move your tool. You can see the difference. And that's caused by the rotation of the tool as I'm moving. Very useful step. And we'll see why when we go to the burnishing.